Hey everyone, welcome to this video. I've been discussing in previous videos how we can deploy the OWASP Juice Shop known vulnerable application. So if you're interested in learning more about application security testing or application security in general, this is a great application built on current technologies that helps us understand some of the common weaknesses that we may see in our applications. So it can also be used as a CTF. So it's got a bunch of challenges built into it and it's ready for us to start attacking in a way where we're not gonna get in trouble for attacking an application. So since I previously covered installing it, this time I wanna talk about one of the challenges is out there and a way in which we can go about trying to solve the issue without having to try to dig through a whole bunch of code. And this is something that as a tester, you build scripts, you do all kinds of things to help make your life a little bit easier. And so in this example, we're gonna look at how Angular uses a route provider to determine what or lay out what routes exist. So if I'm gonna to go to the contact us screen, right, that might go to slash contact. Now in typical web applications, you go to slash contact, it loads the entire page back down. This is an Angular single page application, so it works a little differently. The views are already loaded, it's just calling APIs in the background. So we're gonna look at how we can find those APIs uh, or those routes, I apologize, that exist and an easy way we could do that using a burp extension versus just trying to dig through the code manually. We'll actually look and see how we could dig through this and find it, but we're actually gonna build a burp extension for this so that way we can see how it works. So let's dig over into the code and let's start looking at how we can build this burp extension and how it helps us potentially identify uh, the solution to a couple of these challenges that we have. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got the juice shop up and running and we can see that we're able to go visit the site. And one of the first things we're going to do is, you can notice that at the top we have the slash search. So we have a route that we're already on and viewing within our application. So we wanna find what some of these other routes may be. So we have to figure out how that's being done. Now this app's using Angular and it uses that route provider that is what's going to define what the different routes are that are available. So if we were to go over and click on contact us, if you look down here at the bottom, we're not gonna click on it, but if you look at the bottom, it goes to slash contact. About us goes to slash about, right? Those are our different routes that we're gonna be looking for within our application. Now I've got burp loaded up to the side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first run this and I'm gonna go ahead and execute this. And now I don't have my burp extension installed yet that's actually gonna help us find these routes. This is what we're gonna look for. So you can see that in this case, we have some routes. Uh, you can see in this case that we have uh, some issues that are being identified. Of course, these are not the issues that we're looking for at this current time. So we're going to create an extension to help us find the routes that we wanna see. So first, let's come over here to the proxy and we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna find the actual main JavaScript file, which is this dist slash juice dash shop dot min dot js. So this contains the bulk of our JavaScript for our application that we're running here. So when we look at the response, if we look for route provider, we can scroll down here and we can see that we've got a config that's setting up route provider for us. And there's a bunch of these e dot wend. So you can see administration, about, register. Okay, so these are the things that we just saw when we were clicking on the links or, or looking and hovering over the links in here. These are the routes that are available to us within this application. But looking at this, as you can tell, can be a little bit overwhelming. Now you could pull this out into Visual Studio Code and make it look pretty and it'll format it and it'll be a little bit easier to look through, but this is a large file. So that can be kind of a pain. Also, we want some way to be able to alert us that this even exists. I don't wanna to have to every application I open up start going into the responses and doing search for route providers to see if we have routes enabled for us, right? So instead of doing that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a quick, simple little burp plugin that'll actually look for this for us, break it out and display it. So if we come over here, 
we can see that I've got this Juice Shop Routes application that we're building. Now, there's a lot of interface files that are here. This is just required for when you're building a burp extension. The meat of our code is right here in this burp extender.java. And it starts off with this method over here that is do passive scan. So we're using the passive scanner to be able to look for through these responses to see if that route, route provider exists. And then we're going to take action on it, see if we can't parse it out and get those routes out of there. So that's what we're doing. We're going to call get matches and then we're going to analyze those and then we're going to display them out in a nice little message, which we'll see when we actually run it. But all we're doing for the get matches is we're really just looking for that route provider. If that string exists, then we're going to say, hey, maybe this actually has the routes for us. Let's go ahead and continue on. So what it's going to do is it's going to find where that starts find where that configuration section closes, which is the closing brace or bracket that we have right here. And then it's going to return that. It also re it returns those offsets. So that way we get highlighting, which we'll see. The next thing we do is we take that and we split it apart looking for those e dot wins. Remember when we looked over there in the code, it was e dot when contact e dot when about. And if you were going to about, it would then load the about HTML that was loaded in there for that. So we're going to look for all these e.wens, parse them out and be able to display them in a nice little screen. So once you get this built up and you can actually go find this, I have it out on GitHub. If you want to take a look, it's out here under just slash James Jardine slash juice shop routes. Uh, and all the code is out there for you if you'd like to take a look at it. But all you have to do is you build it. So on here, we can just right click and say build. I can see my build was successful. The next step is I'm gonna come over here into burp, I'm gonna to go to extender, and then I'm gonna add. And I'm gonna go find that file that I just wrote. And here it is, juice shop routes.jar. I'm gonna open it, I'm gonna add it. There's no errors, no output. So now I've got it installed. Now, if I go back over to my target tab, and I've got the juice shop selected and I've got my issues tab selected. Now you only get this if you have the pro version. Remember, keep that in mind. I've got my issue tab selected. Notice how there's no angular routes or anything. Nothing's changed in here. Now I'm going to refresh my page over here. Now I'm going to do a shift refresh. So that way it fully goes and grabs all the data again, instead of having modified files. And now notice how I get a new item. Now I get Angular routes on here, and it gives me this quick issue detail. It says the response contains the string route provider and has the following routes. And now we can see some of these routes that are listed. And as we talked about when we saw this, the slash about, the slash contact, slash register, slash basket. Now I could take any of these if I wanted to and come back over here and say, oh, I want to go to slash basket and see what happens. Oh, and look, I'm at my basket now. Okay, and that's how this works. When we're testing apps, we find these routes, we want to directly go to them to test to see if they have proper authentication, to see if they have proper authorization. So that's what we're doing here in this case. So if we come back over here and look at the response, now notice that down in the bottom, it says there's one highlight. Well, I can click the next button and it takes me and notice how it's highlighted that whole route provider section for me so I can inspect it. So while I'm not a Java developer, my code may not be the best. Maybe I missed something in here. Maybe the routes aren't working properly. At least I can now come in and see, hey, where did it highlight? Where did it detect this? And I can look through it myself if I need to, but this is actually showing this. So now I don't have to go through and look through all the different JavaScript files looking for route provider. Now, when I load up a site, and hopefully this would work on any site, not just this one, that happens to use Angular and uses this route provider object, that I can check my issues. I say, oh, hey, this is Angular. It's got routes on it. Click it, and now I get this nice list of routes that I can try to go direct and force browse to to see if I can gain access to them. So it's a great example of how we can use simple scripting to build up a, a quick little extension for burp that we can then hopefully use going forward in our testing, uh, but also help save our eyes a little bit from searching for stuff if we know that there's a pattern that exists. So that's just a quick little example. Check out the GitHub page. 
Um, download the code, check it out, see how it works. If you're going to work with the juice shop, uh, definitely check it out and see if it helps you with a couple of the challenges because it definitely will. Thanks for watching.